Welcome to the new episode of the Game Changers. What is Abram International? Abram came about as a business developer and marketing of the need that I felt there is there, is there in the market. Uh, the world economy is changing. The world economy is shifting from the west to the east. So now there are new products, there are new business opportunities in the east that need to be looked differently. So Abram prov provide a vision to others for strategies. Right. Abram has a combination of a number of directors whereby we support each other by each being specialist in his field. We have people who are into infrastructure, infrastructure. We have those who are expert in logistics. We have those who are experts in marketing. We have those in expert in business development. So we support each other that way. Uh, our achievement so far, we have provided uh, A to Z plan for an educational institution, for uh, a perfume um, factory. So this is how we serve other people, is to provide to them an A to Z plan for the business they wish to develop. Now, with, with what you have just uh, you know, tried to relate to, I'm so curious to know about Yapi Muslim. Yapi Muslim came about because from my discussions with the youth, I realized, unfortunately, they've been raised to see faith as something for tomorrow, whereby I want them to look at our holy book as today, for a book that helping you today. Let us take an example in business. Abdullah authored Yuppie Muslim, which is an introspective narrative about the yuppie. Can the young urban professional Muslim be a proper Muslim in the 21st century while still living a normal life? The book Yuppie Muslim by the author Abdullah Salam is available on Amazon.com. I remember you being invited in Paris. Yes, very fo fo fortunate that because I was lucky I didn't re write the book in Arabic because I wrote it in English. A wider audience was able to read it. Young Australian, young Canadians, young Sri Lankan. So I had responses from people from different parts of the world telling me that thank you for making me see the faith from that side. Uh, from Paris, yes, uh, the organization of um, Arab and uh, French uh, cultural organization uh, they were very happy with the book, so they were pleased I had to sign a book, a copy of the signed book today is celebrated in their library because of the way the book was written. A lot of people were surprised to know, to find out that religion can be part of their life for today. The other day you were mentioning about the Eastern philosophy. If you look at the Western school of thought, uh, there are you know, certain things that we've always lived with. But in the context of Greece, how would you fuse that Eastern philosophy? What are the opportunities for us from a historical point of view? See, the problem with the East is that we don't have certain institutions. For an example, we don't have news agencies. So all our media, all that is in our media, is coming from Western agencies, being Reuters, being the French uh, agency, and so on. What that means is the business people, the government people in our part of the world, they are fed analysis and news from the Western perspective. Now, as people say, every, there's a two sides to every story. Now, if we look and read analyses that are being made by the Western people, we are taking ourselves the wrong route. This is why I want to give you an example, Greece. Now we are being told Greek is going out of the Euro. Uh, Greek will be in trouble. Uh, Greek will be a disaster. A disaster to who? A disaster to the Western world. To, to the Eurozone, but is not a disaster to the Eastern world. The Greek, they are by genes European, but geographically, geographically, they are Mediterraneans. 
we the Eastern people share with them the same sweets, baklava. We share the same food with them, cuisine, being it shish, uh, being kebabs, being smoking sisa together. So they are part of the East. Half, half of them, they are part, half or part of them is in the East. Now they have lost, either they're no longer wanted in their other Western half, we could see them as an opportunity. Greece, they may have lost some industrial part, they may have lost money, but still, it has the beaches, it has the history, it has the culture, it has the monuments, they're still there. Why don't we take advantage of that, bring them back to the east with us, we develop with them for their good and for our good. We have big markets. Greece, by coming back to the East, it's coming back to the GCC, oil-rich countries. It's coming back to a big market in Iraq. It's coming back to a big market in Iran. It is coming to, 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 to India. Why don't we bring them back? It is only a half of the distance to the rest of Europe. We could go to holiday to, uh, there if they develop it well. We are still going to Europe, but only, only half the distance. They will benefit, we will benefit. Uh, Malaysia and Singapore have developed big zones whereby you can go like the Arab street, where you can feel like you're in the Arab world. We can do the same in development, Greece the same way. They benefit, they have new outlets, they have new kind of tourists. It could even be big spender tourists. So why, why Greece is a disaster going out of Euro? Because we do not analyze ourselves. We don't see opportunities for ourselves. We only see what the other people say is our opportunity. That's our problem in the East. Mr. Abdullah, please tell us your secret of success for these young, emerging, dynamic entrepreneurs. Of all the things that helped me to succeed, that I believe the young can benefit from, is believing and understanding customer is king. I was lucky because of my Western education. I was able to learn from many years back, the customer is king. I implemented that in my life and in my business. Now the youngsters need to know what you personally believe in you is a color of people who you should respect. It's, your, it's a personal business, keep it inside you. In the market, we have to realize in our part of the world, we are in a unique situation whereby in some cities, the locals are only 10%. 90% of the people of the market are expatriates. Now, expatriates, most of them come from countries where customer is king. They are raised on that, they are spoiled by that. You implement that or they rate you down. Secondly, you believe a particular color is better than the other or more respectful, another color in life, that is your part of your problem. As far as in the market, everybody is number one, everybody is king, regardless of his color, of his nationality. You treat him with respect as a king, regardless what your view on particular nationalities or on colors. That's what the youngsters need to, to, need to know and they need to believe in and they need to implement it. You don't want to accept that. You don't want to believe that. That is your problem and get out of business because you can't change the market. The market is like that. 90% expatriates. Respect expatriates, believe in them and treat them as kings. You don't want to do it, get out of business and go to your home and continue your prejudices. Let us put it easily. What I'm trying to say is in business, you need to be colorblind. What the color of the man walking into your shop is irrelevant to you. He's king. He's a customer. Also, you need to be gender blind. The person walking to your shop, is he a female or male, is none of your business. He's a customer. They both get equal respect.